All right, so last time what I had done here, we have uh, scene one and scene two. We have this very basic uh, box, and then we've got an arrow. Remember, you can drag the box around. You can click on the arrow to go next. That was just our very quick introduction that we're going to write code. We're going to have objects, these library objects. We need uh, instance names on the object so that our code understands that we're dealing with that thing. Uh, this needs some more setup so we can get started for real. Uh, number one is uh, this project is set to be vertical, right? We see that it's tall and we've got our dimensions here as vertical. We need to change this to be horizontal. So we, switch, we need to switch those numbers around. We need to go to 800 by 480. So first of all, with your select tool, click on the stage and then change the properties of the project to 800 by 480. Just switch those numbers. 800 by 480. Now everything's going to go off the stage. Don't worry about it. We're not even going to keep it. But we want to be horizontal. We saw that when you, if you play the, the game, the example game, it's, it's sideways. It's landscape. So we've changed our stage to be landscape. We need to change one more thing. Uh, if you go back up to the file menu and you s select at the bottom uh, Android settings, you also need to change a basic setting there. It's file menu, Android settings. Under file, Android settings, we'll go up to the deployment tab. Oh, not there, actually, keep it on the general tab, sorry. On the general tab, there's a spot there that says aspect ratio. We just changed it to landscape. We want our, our game to work in landscape, so we need to change the aspect ratio to landscape. It was set to portrait, and it would, it would behave weird if we change our dimensions horizontally, and this is still set to portrait. So make sure you change that to landscape. If anybody needs an extra table, I got one. Right. Oh, cool. Thank you for that. <clears throat> All right, so uh, the while we're here, just to make sure your hardware is working, uh, go over to the deployment tab. Last time, we made you a certificate that it was a .p12 file. Uh, you made that certificate. I asked you to sit, hold on to it. If you didn't save it, you can use mine. But at the end of the project, you want your own. You don't want my credentials in your app. You want your credentials. So if you have your P12 file, you can browse for it and type its password. If you don't, you can browse and get the one that I have in my folder. I just need to remember my password. So open up that browse. And inside of the project folder, What's that? Was it export or publish? Right now we're under the Android settings, under the file menu. File and then Android settings. If you're using my project, you should see in the project folder a .p12 file, my, my certificate. You can borrow that one. And then click open. My password is Victor. Very complex. So just type Victor as the password set to remember, and then try to publish it, try to deploy it to the connected device. If it doesn't fully, fully work in like one moment, you'll have to use the emulator control enter. But get my certificate, my password, which is just Victor, and then select your device and publish. Okay, I have a quick question. Yes. Can you play your phone in uh, developer mode again? Yes, yes, I, I did mention earlier. You need to put your phone every time into developer mode when you come back in, just so that it works. If you need any reminder on that, let me know. So I've got mine plugged in. If you needed a cable, we have one being donated temporarily. So I'm getting mine to deploy. Once that works, we'll, we'll proceed. But let's make sure this works at this point. Anyone having any trouble? The first time I think we do this publish, it might take the longest, but then after that it should work. And then eventually we get this weird warning that you should just ignore. So 
Usually this runs faster if you're doing it from your desktop, but the problem with that is if the computer crashes, you lose your work. So we're stuck there. I'm running mine from my flash drive just in case, but it seems slow. Here we go. So mine is about to deploy, and it's going to have this weird warning. There's nothing we can do about it. Just click OK. So it eventually loads up on my device. It is landscape now. That's what I was looking for. Whoops, some of the things are off the stage, and I can't get to them. That's OK. But I can move the, the little box. So we just want to make sure we're at this point, and we're ready to go. Most likely, you're going to need to do the, the whole uh, driver thing again. Did we ever get it to work last time? No, it's in developer mode. Yeah, but you download your driver and all of that and stuff like that. Looking at BlackBerry USB driver. See if you can find that. I'm going to have to do that. If not, you'll just be able to do control enter instead of publish. Do some of this. Alright, so I've got the device and it's running my project. Let's get back into the main screen. I'm going to click OK. This, uh, this scene and the next scene were just there to play around with. We're not really going to need them. Let's go up to the window menu and then select scene. So the current scene one and scene two, they were temporary. We're going to delete them. Go up to window scene. Let's make a brand new scene. Scene three, I'm going to call that uh, S0 home. I'm going to name these different scenes, you know, scene one with a certain designator. S and this is scene zero, S0. This is the very first screen, that home screen that tells you the name of the, div of the project, etc. Then when we create the screen where we go into the gate, that'll be S1 gate. So I'm going to use that kind of naming structure. This doesn't matter what you call them. But I want to call it like this just so that it makes sense to me. This is the first screen, the second screen, the third screen, etc. So I'll press enter. And then you want to delete scene one and scene two. They were just temporary. So click to select scene one and delete it, and then delete scene two. It's going to say, are you sure you want to delete it? Yes. So make sure you delete the old scene one and the old scene two. So this very first screen that we're going to have here is the, the welcome screen. It's going to be a screen that's going to show you know, the name of your project. Together, we're going to create this sort of haunted house game. Uh, and then eventually, it's going to be a game about your own character that you made. So here, very, very simply, let's just, uh, with the brush tool or the text tool or whatever, let's uh, write the name of our game, which is Haunted House. Haunted House Adventure, whatever you want. Don't get too uh, bogged down in the details of drawing it perfectly and all of that. You'll be able to do that later. The main thing we want to focus on is the, is the code.
screen here. So this is the welcome screen. Uh, the cool thing about what we can do here is we're going to focus a lot on the coding, right? But you'll still be able to do any of the things you learned previously. Uh, animating things, using the camera to zoom in and out and all that cool stuff. So eventually you're going to have an intro screen like this for your game, hopefully a little bit nicer, but this is just something to show. We're then going to make a couple of buttons. One button to take us to a screen about what the game is, how to play it, credits, whatever you want. So that'll teach us then how to make a button. Let's make, let's write some text here and say uh, help in the corner. This is going to be a button. It's going to be a really simple button. You're going to make a better button later. That help that you wrote there. Then, what's that? Yeah, exactly. You can draw some really nice buttons in fireworks and import them in and then uh, use them here. Uh, so this, uh, this we're going to turn it into a button. Go ahead then and select the whole thing, all your words. Right now they're separate elements. So write something like help or make a little circle and call it help, whatever you want. Select it and then we'll press F8 to convert it into a symbol. Pretty much everything we're going to do needs to be a symbol so that the code can affect it or that the code can trigger it. So make sure you select it and press F8. And uh, type is movie clip. 99% of the time we're going to use in our project a movie clip type. And then we need to give this a name. I will say MC help. <coughs> I'm calling it like that because all my movie clips will then be in my library alphabetize, MC help, MC door, uh, MC rock, MC hammer, whatever you want. So whenever we have music, it's going to be, you know, music, intro, music, end, right? We're going to put these names in our symbols so that we can quickly find them in our library. <coughs> the spelling does matter. If you call it all lowercase, here, you need to write the code lowercase. Uh, usually when you program, you don't want spaces in, in your code. Uh, you want to keep it all as one simple name. You can use underscores and all of that if you want. But what's very common is, is this, which is known as camel caps or intercaps. You have capitalization inside of the word, like a camel's hump. Right there, camel caps. So whatever you call this thing, make sure you keep track of it. And Animate will show you your, your names right there. So go ahead and call that MC help and then OK. And now if we switch over to the library panel, properties panel, library panel, if you don't see your panels, all your panels, you can always find them in the window menu. So we've got the old box, and we've got the next button, and we've got the help button. Double click your MC help. In the library, double click the MC Help icon. And I'm going to draw like a simple box, 
behind the words. The words are on a layer one, so I need a new layer. I'll draw a box or a shape or whatever and put that below it. The reason for this is this button, uh, the only part that a person will be able to click on is the actual letters. So if someone's trying to click and they miss and they click right there between the P, that's empty. The button won't react. The person has to click on the on that line. And this line, in my case, is tiny. So if I draw a little box behind it, the whole area is the clickable area. Because someone's going to say, well, this game doesn't even work. I'm trying to click help and it doesn't work. Well, their finger is missing. That is, missing the target. So make a new layer, draw a box or a shape or whatever behind it, and fill it in also. I'm going to draw like a simple little blob or something. Doesn't matter. And then I'm going to fill it in with the color. It's kind of hard to read, but that's okay. It's a pool of blood. Draw some shape on its own layer, layer one, layer two. You can name those layers. You should. You can figure that out. That's my button. Go back to scene one. At the top left corner, click the back arrow. Okay, uh, so I'm going to save that. Now uh, we're going to we're going to name our layer one here assets, and we'll make a new layer. Call it actions. We can make as many layers as we want. As always, we can separate things into layers if we want. But the main sort of visual assets. In my case, I'll put them in one layer, and then I'll lock the layer for the moment, and make a new layer and call it Actions. I said last time it's best to call Actions with a capital A. The reason for that is if you use any code snippets, it will if it doesn't see an Actions layer, it will make one for you. But it wants to make a layer called capital A Actions. So if you make your own layer and call it capital A Actions, if you use a code snippet, it will use your current layer. If you don't, you'll have two layers with action script. Not a big deal, but then you'll you know lose track of your stuff maybe. We'll go up to the window menu and select the actions panel, F9. So memorize that one. We have F5, F6, F7, F8, F9. F9 opens up your actions. And this is when it's really nice to have a nice big monitor like yours because you'll be able to see your work and your code. So I have this panel. I'm going to open it up a little bit. It's going to block my view. The first code that I want here is stop, or else everything will play automatically. I don't want anything to happen until the user reacts, until the user clicks. So my very first command is going to be the stop command. Stop with open and close parentheses semicolon. 99% of the time, that's the very first command you want. We're saying stop the timeline at this point. Don't forget the semicolon. Now, if you want to make comments, and I recommend you make comments into your code to remind yourself of stuff. Does anyone remember how do we make a comment? Uh, two slashes. Two slashes. Yes. So forward slash, which is the question mark. Two slashes. We'll make a comment. This stops the movie at this point. Whatever comments you want to make, and I'll make comments just to help you out. Now, ActionScript, like most programming languages, is pretty complex. There's a lot of codes. We can go look them up. Uh, you can get several books about them. Uh, it's, it's a lot of code, but you don't have to have it all memorized. You know, Our project is going to be approximately 380 lines of code. That's a small program. In some of these more complex games, it's easily thousands of lines of code, millions of lines of code. So 380 lines is no big deal. 
what we want to do here is activate a couple of features. Since this is going to be a touch game on a device, we need to activate the features of being able to touch uh, the elements. So before our stop, actually, give yourself a couple new lines before stop, we're going to activate some features. It's sort of like not all of the features are activated because we don't need all the features. Our game would be bigger and bigger and bigger. So we need to say import space. We're going to import. We're going to activate some of this code. Flash dot. You may get a pop-up that helps you. Events dot. Touch event with a capital T. If you, if you see it popping up here, you can just double click it and it'll type it for you. Import space flash dot events dot touch event. And then semicolon. Comment. This activates touch features. This activates the ability for us to interact via touch in our app. Next line, line two, we're then also going to add multi-touch, capital M, dot input mode, capital M, <coughs> equal multi-touch, input, capital I, Mode, capital M. No, this one's a little different. Some of these codes are going to look so similar, and unfortunately, they are going to have a difference so that we're just going to have to, to, to learn. Uh, there is a dot here, and that's this is going to be in all capital letters. Touch, underscore point, and then semicolon. And again, yes, this needs to type the to be typed exactly how it's supposed to be or it won't work. And that's why I'm going to give you a copy of my code at the end of the day, just in case it doesn't work. And if you never learned uh, typing in high school or college, you are at a bit of a disadvantage, unfortunately, because you know we're going to need to type these, line, these commands. And if you know the keyboard, you'll be able to type it faster. This one is related to the same sort of thing, to be able to touch the device and we've activated multi-touch so we can touch you know with two fingers to do something we can do the you know the pinch to zoom features and all of that so this is activating multi-touch input you can comment that activates multi-touch input it's just a fancy way of saying we'll be able to touch with two fingers zoom in zoom out all of that stuff So that setup, that basic setup, is usually going to be the first things you add, the ability to touch your project and multi-touch. After the stop command, let's add some more commands. Line 6. This is now when we're going to start to actually make the button do something. So that button that we created, that help button, uh, it needs an instance name so that our code can can use it let me uh, let me hide my actions for a moment in my case it gets in my way but you don't have to hide it I'm gonna hide I'm gonna get that out of the way for the moment so that you can go back to select your help button you'll have to unlock your assets layer and select the help button so select your help button again on the stage. The properties say you've got the button selected. If it says you've got mixed content, you've selected too much. Deselect, and then just select the button. You should see the instance. Then the name, so that we can refer to it via code. The name of that button will be 
help underscore MC. So we're going to do it backwards. In the library, it'll be MC help. In the code instance, it'll be help underscore MC. You can call them the same thing. But it's the reason to call them different things is because one version of the name is this is it in the library. And another version of the name is this is it in my code. So make sure you call this help MC. Lock the assets layer and go back to actions. Actions layer. OK, so on line 6, we need to say, let's click on that button to go to frame 2, which doesn't exist yet. We'll create it in a moment. The name of the button is help underscore MC. And we're going to attach code to it. So there's a dot. The dot is usually there in that sort of way to attach code to an object. We have add event with a capital E, listener, open and close parentheses, semicolon. This command, this stop command, technically it's attached to the whole movie. It would be something like stage dot stop technically. Uh, but it didn't matter because we're stopping the whole movie. Here we're saying this object, the help button, let's attach this command to it, add event listener. The event is that we click it, or the event is that we drag it, or the event is that we pinch to zoom, or the event is that it shoots a laser and it hits the bad guy. Well, we have events. So in the parentheses, the event listener is uh, touch event dot touch underscore tap. So on the event that we, <coughs> we tap it with touch, that button, do something. So comma. FN go help. Once we touch that button, run more code, run another function called function FN go help. This is a function that will maybe play a sound, move you to the other screen, reset your high score, or something. That's again, last time I said the point of a function is a collection of steps. This stop is, does one thing, the event listener does one thing. This function is going to maybe do multiple things. So it's grouped together in a function. I'm going to write this above my code here so you can see it. After clicking the help button, run the fn go help function. So just some notes to remind yourself what it's doing. Save your work every once in a while. I don't believe this has auto save, so you want to save it. Does a uh, anime have auto save, Angie? I don't remember. Did they, re did they ever activate that? It should auto save automatically after every ten minutes. Okay, that's good. We just need to make sure we don't crash our computer in nine minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's actually better to turn off auto save and just save. Regularly, hmm. like set an outside timer. Say, uh, okay. Usually, what I do is as soon as I type a command, I just get in the habit of Control S. Mm -hmm. That way, whatever you type, just save it right away. That's what I would recommend everyone. Type one command and then Control S to save. Now that way, the auto you don't do something intensive during an auto save and crash the computer. <laughs> <sighs> Somewhere in the. It's going to be also somewhere in the options, probably, you know, go to the edit menu preferences and probably somewhere in there. All right, so what we're saying here is let's run a function called function go help, which doesn't exist. We're about to invent it. So next line, we will say function. We're about to invent a function, which we are calling fn go help. 
the syntax is open close parentheses and then open and close curly braces. Now we're saying, okay, what does f and go mean? We're going to invent f and go help right now. Inside these parentheses, we need to say, well, this function is being used when we click on something. Because a function can be used different ways. When you click something, when a timer runs out, when a graphic loads. So in the parentheses, we need to define uh, some more parameters here. Uh, we have event in lowercase, colon, touch event with a capital T. So this function is being used for touch events. Uh, if you ever use JavaScript, this is very similar. But I kind of like JavaScript a little better in one regard. You don't have to be so specific in JavaScript. In JavaScript, you don't have to really do this import thing. All the code is just ready to use. In JavaScript, you don't have to say this, well, I can only use this function when I touch. JavaScript is a little looser. Uh, it kind of changes to how you need it. Action script in other languages, though, they, you do need to be specific about, I can only use this function for this feature. And one more thing, after this parenthesis, then we have to do uh, colon void. Because the result of using a function is something. It could give you a result of giving you back a number, like at your high score. The result could be it instead gives you text. So you have to say, what's the result of using this function? This is not really going to be that kind of result, so we say void. That's a good time to write a note. Uh, created function to react to touch events and returns nothing, void. This will contrast later on. Uh, if you played the game, you got to the room with spikes, and most of you died there because the game was too mean. Well, that uh, you got through, so you, you saw the bunnies. After that, so after cried. Once we get to that spike room, we are gonna. The way that works is is there's random numbers happening, and you might get lucky, you might not. So there's gonna be a function there to check. Are are you lucky? And the result of that is gonna be a number. So that's going to be in contrast here. There's no result of clicking that. But later on, there's going to be a result for the function spikes, which will be a number. But we'll get to that later. Go between those curly braces and press Enter to break it to the next line, because this is going to be multiple steps. That's the whole point of making a function. So press Enter a couple of times. So we have a line 11. I'm also going to bring that back to the left. Most of the time, the spaces that we add to our code don't matter, but they will when I, when I tell you. Obviously, if you put function, no space, fn, go help, it doesn't work. There's a command, there's a command. We broke this into the next line so we can read it. We could have technically written one long, huge command off to the edge that is hard to read, but the computer won't care. I like to divide up my code like this. I like to press tab so that it's kind of you know nice and readable. And the point of this, uh, this function is to take us to scene 2, the scene where the help is at, which doesn't exist yet. But what we need to do then is say movie clip with a capital M and a capital C, parentheses. We're dealing with a movie clip. Inside the parentheses, this dot root. We can have the main stage and a button on the screen, a movie clip. We can have a button in a button to do some interesting things. Later on, when we uh, remember in the game, you touch the painting too many times and it falls and breaks. That was a movie clip with an animation inside of it. So we will be able to do different things inside of movie clips. What we're saying here, however, is the root, the main stage, the top level, the root of this movie clip. Let's do something with it. Let's, at the end, dot, go to, and play. We're dealing with our help button, but 
but we're saying on the main level of this project at the root, <coughs> let's go to some other frame, some other scene. In the parentheses, we'll say one. This is frame one, comma. We haven't created it yet, but we'll we'll still type it here in quotes. Open quote, end quote. And as I said before, I like to teach coding in that you open and close your elements before filling in the details, because you're going to forget that element. Your whole code will break. That's so why we opened and closed it and then filled it in. That's why I'm opening and closing it here, so that I don't forget that quote, or else everything else will be broken. In the quote, we will do S1, help. Scene 1, help. We're currently on S0, welcome, whatever we called it, the zero with screen. There's another screen here, a help screen. We're saying here, let's go to scene one help after clicking our button. Let's make a note. Go to frame one of S1 help scene in the main timeline. That's what that code is doing. So we've done this several times. You've done it several times. Create a new scene, call it S1 help, Make a smiley face there or something. Create a brand new scene. Call it S1 help, and then we'll go on. is going to work is different parts of the haunted house are different scenes. So after you type that code that we just did, go back to your scene panel, make a new scene, call it exactly what we named it in the code right now, S1 help. Awesome. We saw last time that when we jumped from scene to scene, it's going to loop back to, be, to the beginning. How do we prevent that looping back from scene 1 to scene 0? Stop. So create a new layer called Actions. Every scene is going to have its own layer of Actions. And add the command Stop. Then save it and publish it. Check what you have so far. So I'm going to call this Assets layer again, just to keep naming it like that. and. I'll create a new layer called Actions. And in my Actions panel, I'll type Stop. After I've set up my, my device at least once, and I tested it that it worked, now you can simply go to File, Publish. Or if you memorize, Shift, Alt, F12, keyboard shortcut. Try this out, publish it, see if it works. If it didn't, call us over if you get some sort of error message. What's that? Exactly, you want to focus all your, all your action script code in an actions layer. Anyone need a little help? Are you getting any error? Uh, it's stuck on my head, but it's
put my code back up here and let's see if it worked.
everyone's got some kind of yes. like it's working let's go on so at this point uh, we are seeing we're going from the first scene to the second scene from scene zero to scene one so that's how I'm going to refer to them quickly scene zero scene one or help scene whatever so we're on on the first scene we go to the second scene the help the point of the help scene is just to display some text uh, to be like uh, hello this game is about X and Y Z whatever so uh, let's be in our help scene 
And uh, if we're in this scene and I go to it on my phone and I go to help, it's there, but there's no way to go back. Yeah, so right. we need to do a back button. Based on what we've already done, we have that knowledge already. We need to create a button, we need to give it an instance name, and we need to write the same add event listener code to take us back. So let's create a new button again. I'm going to very, very simply here just type assets. We only want to use our actions layer for writing the code. So I'm going to have a back button. So you will fill these screens out a lot better later. Right now I'm giving you the basic foundation. This back is just text. I need to select it and turn it into a symbol. What's the shortcut for that? F8. So after you've drawn your back button, you need to select it and press F8. What's a good name for this symbol? MC back. So it's a movie clip to go back. Uh, we need to then give it an instance. Exactly. So after you convert it to a symbol, then in your properties panel here, you name that back underscore MC. In your actions layer, we've added stop so far. We need to then set up our way to make the button take us back. So get used to looking here in your actions panel. Here's my scene zero, here's my scene one, my scene whatever. And I can easily jump to the layers where I've written my code. So I'm on uh, frame one, actions layer, scene one help. We need to do the same thing to make that button active. We need to say its name, which is uh, back underscore MC dot add event listener. We can do some copying and pasting. If the previous one worked, we need to do the same thing. We need to make that button active so we can do some copy and paste. But we'll write it longhand first time. Yes? Um, does back have to be capitalized or can it be lowercase? I wrote it as lowercase. Oh. So I'm going to keep using lowercase. But if you have a capital, that's fine. Just keep the same name. So what we're waiting for again is a touch event dot touch tap in the parentheses. Touch event dot, dot touch tap, touch underscore tap, comma. After we tap the back button, we will run a function to take us back. So we'll make fn go home because we've got um, we've got the home screen this function is to go home we're gonna have a function that goes to other screens function to start a timer to high score whatever next line we need to define that function function fn go home parentheses curly braces as before, we need to then further say this function is going to be used for a touch event, colon void, it does not return anything. This is the thing that, as opposed to JavaScript, you just have to type more. You have to be more specific. It's not better, it's not worse, it's just you, that's the way the language is, you have to t type more. This one is going to be again, as before, the event, colon, touch event. Void. Exactly the same as back on scene one. Let's be nice this time. I need to do the same thing about go to and play back to the beginning. I already wrote it properly on scene zero. I'm going to go back to scene zero and copy it to paste it into scene one change it. So here's a shortcut. Instead of typing it manually, I'm going to go back to my frame 1, and I need to copy the line, in my case, on line 12, which is that whole 
movie clip dot go to and play. I already typed it properly once. I don't need to retype it and type it wrong. So I'm going to go back to where it worked on scene one or scene zero. Copy it. Right click copy or control C. Go back to scene one and paste it there. What do we need to change? Exactly. It's no longer going to scene one help. It's going to S0 home or whatever you call your scene. We called it, should have called it S0 uh, home. S0, not SO, S0 home. So you can type it longhand. But some of these things we're going to do over and over. Later on, when we're going to activate the music, that's going to be like 12 lines of code to turn on the music. I don't want to retype those lines of code on every scene. I'll just copy and paste if the code works. So this should take us back home. You can test it. For me, it might be faster to just do Control Enter instead of waiting for the, for the device to load it up. It, Maybe faster with a control enter. If you do control enter, however, on your simulator you have to activate the touch fe feature, right? touch and gesture. So I did control enter, I went to touch and gesture and turned on touch, so I get a finger. And then I click help. I'm on the help screen and I click back. Yeah, that's true, but uh, even though uh, I didn't make a very good button, it should still be clickable on the part where I did draw. You know, I have this big area to, to click here, yes, but on this simple button, if I do hit the actual you know, line, it should go back. Sometimes the touch layer turns off for some reason. Anyway, okay, so I've got the back button. If I hit it on the right spot, it should go back home. So some simple navigation here. Yes. Um, you can always make the, um, the invisible white box around the back button. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we can make a new layer, set alpha zero, and it's still clickable in whatever size we want. It makes it easier. OK, so later on, you'll put something nice in this help screen. You'll tell people what your game is, how to play it, whatever. For the moment, then we've, we've gone from home scene to help scene. Let's go back to the home scene. Let's make a button to actually start the game, the first screen, the gate. So let's go back to home scene. Let's make a new button in your assets layer. We have the help button. You need to make a button to start, or a button called play, or start, or welcome to your death, or something. So I'm going to make a button called start. So brush tool. Call it start. Turn it into a symbol. F8. I'll call it MC start. Instance start underscore MC. This will be totally easy because we already have the button in the same layer, in the same scene, to make this one work. So I'll just copy and paste it to make that one work, changing a little thing and then making a scene two, gate two. So I've got the button. I'll go back to my actions. In the, in the library when you, oh well it's backwards, start underscore MC. So then in my, in my actions, the way the help button worked is we had the event handler and then the function definition. So why not copy this whole chunk 
down from the original event handler down to the ending parentheses, uh, the ending curly brace of the function. So copy that chunk, paste it after itself, and then we need to change the little details, the particular instance and the particular function. This is a time saver. So I'm going to go back and select that chunk, paste it on line 15. Your lines don't have to match up. Your line numbers don't have to be the same as mine, but they should hopefully make sense. You post it on line 13? Uh, no, you copy from about line 7 to 13, whatever your lines are, and then paste it two lines later. Press enter twice and then paste. That's no longer help MC, that's start MC. And it's no longer going to FN go help, it's FN go gate, S2 gate, whatever we want to call these things. So start MC, FN go gate. Therefore, my new function definition is FN go gate. And the go to and play is changed to S to gate. So we saved a lot of typing. Make sure your event handler is attached to your new instance, start MC. Make sure it's then running a new function. We can reuse the same functions, we'll see later, but we have to make a new function here because it goes to a new screen. So this function, function go gate. Then we define it here, function go gate. And the point of what this function does at the moment is to then take us go to and play s to gate. We will create a scene s to gate. We need to add again a layer there for actions. We need to add the stop command uh, and draw some other thing there temporarily. And then you can test it to see if you're on the right track to fix your errors. Here's this code for scene one. We'll come back later on these next few days to add. Uh, music. We, we haven't added music yet. I want to add that, of course. But for the moment, we're just kind of navigating through screens a little bit. All right, so... Uh, I'm going to save that. I need to make a new scene. So if anyone's ever told you, don't make a scene, you can say your instructor said you can now in Adobe Animate. New scene, and we'll call it uh, S2 Gate. The order of these, I added a new scene, and it added it after S1. It's going to add a new scene after your currently selected one. It really doesn't matter what this order is here because we're going to jump between scenes and frames anyway. It doesn't matter. But I am naming them in this order for me to understand the, the, the project. So if it gave you a scene to gate and then put it in the wrong spot, just drag it down in the right order. Scene to gate, layer one, rename that to assets. We're going to have a gate. I'm just drawing very simply black and white. You can get complex later. It's super complex, you'll see why in a little bit. Uh, so then I need a layer for actions and a stop command. And this should make sense. The very first real part of the game is scene two gate. That's some kind of gate, some kind of door, whatever.
So we've got a new scene with something to look at. We've got a stop command. So from the home scene, S0, we go to S2, something to look at. We need to stop there or else it'll continue to play. Now, you may have heard of or you may have explored or you may know, we have go to and stop command. I've been using go to and play. Uh, both are valid. Technically right now, since we don't have that much complexity, a go to and stop would be good enough. But the reason uh, we might want to go to and play is we, we are going to these different screens and they just appear. But you could animate some cool stuff happening before the person needs to react. You could animate a camera movement moving from one part of the screen to the gate. You could have you know, wind uh, rustling the trees. You could have some animation happening between frame 1 and 20. So we needed to go to and play frame 1 and play that cool intro part of the scene and then a stop on frame 7 where the actual code then starts for the person to react. And we will do an example of that later. We have go to and play and we have go to and stop. If we do go to and play, we have to stop ourselves on that, on that scene, on that frame. All right, so here we'll get a little bit more interesting because we're going to have a gate, and we want the gate to to open up. This is going to be another sort of button, another movie clip that will also be active for us to click on. But this will be a little bit different because now the gate is closed at one point, and when the person clicks, it's going to open. We could animate it opening, or we can simply open it. We can do both. But the point here is that we need to we need to um, set this up as a as a symbol, and this symbol will actually have a couple of different frames for animation. Depending how complexly you drew this gate, I only need to make the gate the part that you can click on. Right? This how I drew this gate. I'm going to select only this part of what I drew, only this part. This part I will turn into a symbol, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to fill in the color. So with my select tool, I will select this gate that I drew, only this part of it. Only this part will be clickable, not other parts be able to make any part of the screen clickable in our scene. Of course, you just have to still think about it. There's a target area that is going to be clicked on. F8, we'll call it MC gate. We'll see how only that part of the, of the gate will be clickable. And here's where it's going to be a little easier for us to see where can we click if we change the color of our background. Right now we're using a white background. And in our minds, perhaps, this is a filled-in graphic. It's not. It's transparent. The only part that will be clickable are the actual lines. So before I fix that, I want to select the stage and change your stage color to any other color besides white. I usually go with like a gray. is filled in unless I fill it in. And this will be a <coughs> background color of some gray. Got a brand new symbol here, which we need to call gate underscore MC. Gate underscore MC. Change your stage color, turn the gate into a symbol, give it a name, gate MC. I'm going to edit the symbol in the library because I'm going to add I'm going to add some animation to this symbol. So in the library, double click your gate. I'm going to fill in some colors. Very, very basically, I'm just going to fill it in with white so I can see it contrasted with the gray. I 
I can fill in a gradient and all that fun stuff later. We're just going to do it very simply with white so that we can see that's the thing that you can click on. And I'm going to have basically a frame where the door is closed and a frame where the door is open. So I'll go to frame 5 and press F6 to copy my current frame. And then I'm going to draw it open. Uh, don't worry about actually animating it open too much right now. We can do that later. But on frame 6, I need to draw it open. So that means basically I kind of have to redraw what I drew there. I want to use that same edge. And I'll draw a, an open version of the gate. So frame 1, it's closed. Frame 5, it's open. You can get complex with it later. Question? Uh, I don't know how you got rid of everything. Well, I, I just recolored in. After I did F6, I just drew on top of the parts I didn't want anymore. So we can have different things, different elements on the screen. There will be movie clips that are interactive. And then you're going to be able to click these elements to do things. Whatever has been filled in into your symbol is where the person will be able to click. You can be fancy and use transparent colors as well. Even if you fill in a color that is completely alpha zero, it still will be clickable. So on mine it takes kind of forever to publish. Uh, but I want to show you here, we now have an opening and closing animation, a very simple animation, but an opening and closing. So if I go to the start my door is haunted and it's opening and closing. How do I how do I fix that maybe? My I don't want my door to keep animating. Stop. stop. So we need to add a stop command to the door itself too. That's kind of cool. It looks haunted, but I don't want it to open until the person clicks. I don't want the animation of opening to happen until someone clicks. So frame 1 it's closed, frame 5 it's it's uh it's open. We need to add then a stop command on both of those frames or else it will keep looping. So again, layer one, this is now inside of the gate symbol. Assets, new layer actions, frame one of actions layer in the symbol of the gate, stop. And then we also need it to stop on frame 5. What will happen is back on S2, scene 2, we're going to click the gate. We're going to then jump 
over the stop so that it plays to the opened frame, but we also then want it to stop, stop there. So we need a new blank keyframe. Wherever we want different kind of code to happen, oftentimes we have a new frame. Question? I don't remember if you got there. So that's our action So now in frame five, we need a uh, we need another blank keyframe here. We're going to have code happening on this frame, which is to stop it at this view, and then we need to have code uh, on another frame later. So on frame five, we'll press F seven. We need to have a blank keyframe wherever we're going to add new code. So on frame five, we also need a stop there. You should see then that your code inspector over here says you've got you've got code in these different frames and scenes, and then you've got code inside of symbols. In your MC gate frame one, you have stop, and frame five, you have stop. The point of this is we're setting it up so that we click the, the gate to then open. When it set opens, then we proceed to the next screen. So that means we'll go back to S2 gate, frame one. The gate has an instance name. We need to do the exact same thing. Add event listener, run a function. We did that back on frame one, scene one, scene zero. I'm going to copy and paste that. I'm going to go back to where I had the code that was working before. Uh, wherever you want to get it from, doesn't matter. I'm going to go back. I just went here to the help screen. I needed the, you know, the event listener. I needed the function definition. For wherever you can get it from, copy it and paste it into the, the new gate screen. And we need to change the particulars. <coughs> After stop, so we need gate MC, function go. Uh, the next part, we're going, we're outside of the gates of the premises, and then we're going to go to the front, front door. Okay, function go front door, function go front door, movie clip, go to scene 3, whatever we're on, scene 3, front door. So you see the logic of that. So gate mc, gate underscore mc, running a function go front door. function, go front door, and eventually we're going over to scene 3, front door. So S3, front door. Once we get used to these, then uh, you know we can do it quickly. But do you see here the, the logic of it? We have something to click on, and it goes somewhere. 
And right now we're going from screen to screen. What we're doing a little different here is we're going to animate this door opening and closing. So this would have bypassed the, uh, the door This would have bypassed the door, so what we needed to do, this is ignoring the door. What we actually want is for the door, the door animation to play. So movie clip, this route, go to and play. All of this code here would have us go completely from one screen to the other. This is what we want eventually. Let's comment that line out to deactivate it. Comments can also help you deactivate the code. What I want to do first is play the door animation opening. So on the next line, The name of the gate is gate mc. We're going to then attach dot play. Currently, the gate has stop on frame one, so it's closed. I want the gate to, to now start to play from frame one to five, which opens, and then it stops there. After it's uh, after it's open, then I want to proceed. So let me just take a quick look at it with a quick control enter. Turn on the touch touch layer. I go to the start. I'm at the gate. I click on the gate. A very quick lame animation, but if you want to make it actually rotate, Later on, I'll show you how to attach sound. Maybe I want it to sound like a nice creak. I have a creaking sound for you that we'll attach later. But at the very least, what we did was we, we made the rest of the movie clip play. The door open up. It hasn't gone forward yet, but we activated that code. Let me show that again. If I click on Start, it goes to the gate. If I click on the gate, it plays the opening animation. That's exactly what we did here. Let's make a note there. The code we've used so far, we haven't commented because it's code we've already used. So I'm going to say, first play the rest of the animation in the gate, in the MC gate, the gate MC. then take us to scene 3, front door. This is the case where, OK, well, if I move the code that says go to the front door, if I move that after playing the rest of the gate, that would make sense that it's going to run it in order. The action script code is set up that, you know, when you, when you run this in the browser or in the player or on your device, it starts from the top to the bottom and starts to read your code in order. So if I were to move the go to and play after gate MC play, that would make sense logically. Visually it wouldn't work. It would happen way too fast. It would open it and super fast go to the next scene. So in order for us to control that, we're going to have the actual go to the front door code in the symbol of gate MC. That way we can control it. Animate it, pause for a moment, and then go to the front door. So this line of going to the front door, let's cut it, and we're going to paste it into the right frame in the actual gate symbol. So that movie clip, go to and play, cut it. Don't delete it, cut it. Right, copy and paste. Cut it, and then we're going to go into the Frame 5. We've got closed frame, open frame. That's a good point. Not quite frame.
frame front. We don't see it open long enough. So actually more like frame 25 or further. That'll be only about one second. So we need to, let's do frame uh, 50. Frame 50, actions layer, F7. We need a new, we need a new keyframe to paste our code. The gate disappears. So extend your keyframe of frame 5 to frame 50 with an F5. We need F7 on frame 50, actions layer. We need F5 on assets layer. Because it plays, it's open, it pauses to be open for us to see that it opened for a moment. Frame 50 actions, that's where you're pasting the go to and play. Without the comment, of course. So we've got a code on uh, S2 gate that activates simply playing the, the gate. But then the code that takes us to the next scene is in the symbol, so that we can see the door open for a little while. The playhead is going to play inside the symbol. It's going to get to frame 50, and then we're going to see the go to the front door. We need a scene. S3 front door, where I'll draw a front door with a window. Remember the idea in the game, the, de the game demo is, okay, we're going to then change what's happening in the game. Now we need to break a window, or we need to put a key in the door, or we need to do something. We need to get something and put it into something. That's going to be hit detection in scene three. Well, we need a scene three. Create a scene three, call it S3, draw something, create your actions layer with, with stop. So I need a new scene. New scene, S3 front door. <coughs> Assets layer. Actions layer. We'll stop. Now we've got an S3 front door. I would recommend you have your scene panel open and put it off somewhere so you can quickly get to it. We're going to jump between these scenes a lot. And you do have the icon on the top, this uh, clapper board here that lets you jump from scene to scene. But I think it's way more convenient just to see that on a little panel and be able to jump to it quickly. Also get used to using, again, the code inspector here to jump from scene to scene where you've got code. We need to be in the S3 front door. Actions layer. Yes. Yes. Frame one, we've got it to stop. Frame five, we've got to stop also, and then the last frame, frame fifty, that's where we've got the that's where we've got the go to and play. We we took that, we cut it from uh, back on our other scene and, and pasted it here because that's where it should be at. So what we're going to draw then in our scene three is a front door. If you played the game, there's a front door, a couple of windows. Most people will think, OK, I click on the front door to go in, because I saw the front door on the gate. But we're going to change it. 
we're going to change it now that the front door doesn't let you in. And we're going to have the front door like wiggle or growl or something. It's a haunted house after all. So we're not going to be able to go in through the front door. We're going to go in through the window. So let's draw some door and some window on your front door scene. So I'm going to have a floor. A front door here. Windows. You'll be able to be more detailed later or artistic. We're going to have two things that are clickable on this screen. So the front door, which is fake, and I saw that's kind of a tiny front door. But the front door is not going to actually work, but it'll, it'll still react. It'll still let people click on it, and it's going to kind of be, you know, like a fun, weird thing. The, the window is what will actually um, be a result. Let me make these windows a little smaller. So same thing with the gate, we need to select the door, which will be a hit target, a click target. And I'm going to do a little animation where it kind of wiggles around a little. It's locked, you can't go in. I'm going to save that. Oops, I drew that on my actions layer, so I'll cut that and paste it into my assets layer. If you cut and paste something uh, on screen, I made a mistake here. I drew the door and everything on my actions layer. I cut it from actions. You should then right click and paste in place. If you do a plain old paste, control V, it's going to put it somewhere centered on the screen. If you ever need to cut and paste visual elements, you should paste them in place. Paste them where they came from. So instead of control V, it's control shift V. So it's in the right layer. I'm going to select the door. I'm going to turn it into a symbol. Give it an instance name. Symbol name. We're going to do a little animation in the door. It needs an event listener. Same thing as before. So I'm going to turn that into F8. This will be MC front door. Double click to edit the symbol. Fill in some basic colors. Uh, layer one, frame one, it's closed. I want to draw a few frames here of it kind of shuddering. Yeah, every, we're going to need symbols pretty much all the time when we want something to be clicked on. Hmm? Anything we want. Uh, for in this case, MC front door. That's what it is. All right, so starting with frame five, I'm going to kind of draw my door a little wiggly. So frame five, I'll press F6. It copies my previous frame with the brush tool. I'm just going to trace over my door again. It doesn't have to be exact, and I don't want to be exact. I want it to be a little bit, you know, sort of something like that. The door is going to wiggle a little. Wiggle is happening because the edges look something like that. So depending how you complexly you drew the door, this might be fun or annoying. But I'm going to draw that again. A 
we'll jump two frames later. I'll copy that in and then I'll wiggle it a little bit more. I'm just redrawing a few frames. A few of you did something like this on the animation that you turned in. So we'll do the same sort of thing. What's happening is, see the, I'm just pressing enter to see it really quickly. But the door is gonna kind of wiggle like that. I want uh, I want it to go back to normal. So this is going to this is going to be our code where it loops and all of that, but we need to stop it at a certain point and then loop it at another point. Frame 1 of this symbol, the door is closed. Frame 5, 6, and 7, the door kind of wiggles. It gets weird. So I need to create an actions layer where I'll stop the animation from playing on frame, frame 1. Once we have the button to play, it'll play these extra frames and move back to the beginning where it stops itself. Yes. Yes. Okay, so uh, I've got some animation, very much like the gate, where it was closed then open. This one is, it's normal. You click, it's going to shutter. So we need to go back to our uh, front door uh, frame, where then we can add the code for it to try for us to click. So if we go back to front door, Scene 3 front door. This is where we're going to need that whole event listener function, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so once again, I'll just copy it from wherever else I already used it. I'm going to take it back from the gate. That's exactly what I want. I want front door to run, you know, go uh, wiggle, and then it's going to be front door play. Exact, I need the exact same thing. So take that from your gate scene the event listener and the function definition and paste it into your front door scene what you need to change is the instance name and the function name uh, don't forget to add an instance name I haven't added an instance name on mine yet so I, I'm checking that beforehand uh, on the actual symbol in the scene needs an instance name. 
Uh, it was called MC front door in the library, so it should be called front door underscore MC in the instance. So uh, front door underscore MC. Uh, notice my capitalization here because it's a it's multiple words, so I'm capitalizing the the subsequent words. It's a movie clip, so front door MC. That's what I need to use to replace the code in, in this layer. Frame 1, front door. So that code that I copied from the gate layer, and then pasted in the new instance name to the event listener. This will be function uh, it's not going to actually go anywhere, so I'll call it function front door wiggle. And the function will be function front door wiggle. And then what's going to wiggle? The front door MC. So these functions, obviously, we're inventing and we're calling them whatever we want, and we should use names here that uh, that make sense. <coughs> that uh, when I look at my code next time, uh, I kind of get a sense of what it's supposed to do. Well, this is my code to make the front door wiggle. So change then gate MC front door front door MC is what's wiggle. This comment, you can leave it or change it or remove it or whatever. I'm going to remove it just because I, I already know what it does maybe from a different uh, scene. Well, I'm going to make a comment actually and say, uh, front door will wiggle, but not take us anywhere. So we're, we're changing people's expectation. If they think they're just going to be able to click anywhere to do anything, it's boring. We're going to change the behavior of what people can do on different screens. The very first change here now is you can't go through the front door. We're going to throw a rock at the window. We're going to do that one next time. We're going to wrap up in just a moment. But I want to see if this one works. So now the expectations are different. I can no longer just simply click to open. But I get a result. The door's going to wiggle. Let's see if this does what I want it to do. If I do a control enter. Turn on my touch layer. This is going to be faster for me just turning on the touch layer. I go to start. I clicked on start. I click on the gate. It opens up. There's a little pause. Then it goes to the next scene. It should go to the next scene. And then when on the next scene, I'm on the when I'm at the next scene, I'm at the uh, I'm at the front door. Oh, one one thing here. The the gate we had added our our line of code on line fifty that will take us to scene front door. Oops, we have a stop on frame five. So right now I tested it. It didn't didn't go because whoops, I made myself a stop here. We had you have to go back to your gate movie clip. Now we no longer need that stop on frame five. We need the stop on frame one so that it doesn't open and close on its own. Then when we click the door, it'll play. So it'll do and it'll do. Uh, MC gate play, and then it'll go and won't stop on five and keep going and going. It'll pause, and then it'll get to the go to and play scene three. Comment or take out your stop on frame five in your MC gate.
It was there. We had it there a moment ago. We were just showing the opening and closing of the door. But then I forgot to take it out when we actually wanted to go to the next scene. So no stop on frame five of your MC gate. So I'm at the gate. I click it. It opens up. There's a little pause. Frame 50. Go to and play scene three. I'm on scene three. The reason I'm still having it all in black and white is so that I can see what are the things I'm going to be able to click on. Obviously, I can change the color later, but that's I know so far I can click on that. Nothing else is white. It's the basic gray. So that door, when I click on that one, it wiggles. We'll add a sound effect of a little growl or something next time. But at this point, we've done some sea navigation. We're getting used to that. We need to make movie clips. They need to have instance names, event listeners, and then functions to handle the event. Here now, we're starting to change the user's expectation. No longer can you go simply click. Next time, we'll draw a rock or a pipe or something, and then we'll be able to pick up the rock and throw it to the window. We'll have the rock, we'll have the window detect the rock. Once that detection happens, will animate the window breaking, like we animated the door opening, and the window will have a go to and play. Scene four, the hallway. That's going to be a little bit more because we need hit detection then. So we went a little longer than last time. I'm going to save my work up to this point, test it on your device, hopefully it works. I'm going to put my code up to this point in the network folder. We'll do some lab time. If you need help, call us over. That's it for the moment. Save your file. Keep it. You want to start with it next time, or you can take mine and start where I stopped. So this is how we're going to do the class, right? Writing code, testing code, fixing our issues. Don't be afraid to raise your hand to get some help. You don't want to add up 20 lines of code, because then you'll have to wait when we have more time. So uh, that's it for the moment.